Hey guys, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. Uh, doing a review of the, basically the levels and what we're looking for at the levels. Uh, there's multiple new members in the room, and I want to make sure everyone gets up to speed and understands what we're looking for in, uh, in terms of the higher time frame levels uh, that we're looking to combine the algos with a key location, right? And what that key location means and how it plays out from day to day. It's really important in understanding which way you think the market might potentially roll right so i'm not going to cover the actual trade entry in detail i do that every day in the room and in various trade reviews i just want to cover the levels and the psych psychology from the higher time frames because i think it'll help my members uh, trade better and uh, that's what i'm looking uh, looking to accomplish so um just real quick if you would like to visit the room you can send me an email here to trade and perform t-r-a-d-e n perform at gmail.com ask for a three-day pass to the room and i am more than happy to set you up that's the end of the shameless marketing so let's start with nq so <clears throat> first of all uh context right uh coming in from friday we had a massive trend day up not uncommon in bear markets right and you can see that was pure trend day up coming in on thursday going into friday uh, i do not have the overnight session here but we consolidated overnight we did not really give back very much of the gains, they held strong. You can see in NQ, so if we look at NQ initially, all right, so I'm just gonna go through. At the opening, they pressed on the open, they attempted to get a, this is prior day's high, just to let you know where we're at. And then this is the prior day's volume point of control and TPO point of control. So normally, when you're coming in and you're looking, is a market weak or is a market strong? You would expect most days if you look, particularly in the last couple of months, especially if the market gaps up, probably 70 80 percent of the time we're coming back to the prior day's point of control and we're usually doing that within the first hour uh, of the day so the fact that we couldn't make it back to the prior day's point of control was the first clue that we had a lot of strength and that we might start trending up right again these are bigger context clues that you can use to form your intraday bias for which way you're looking at the market <clears throat> excuse me let me get a little water here So the next thing you're looking at these levels, so obviously these yellow zones are zones, right? There are anomalies off the profile chart. The orange lines are prior days, higher lows that are more than 24 hours old. And so what we're looking at is we initially came in, they tried to push against prior days high, rejected, right? They obviously tried to give a push down at least to this anomaly, which was also a prior days value area high. We couldn't get there. That was the other clue. And so for the first uh, 30 30 minutes of the day, they attempted to push lower and really couldn't get it done. This bar, the second bar ended right at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. we got some econ and they started to push out. So the next clue was, was that we finally closed the 15 minute time frame above prior day's high and we were unable to make it back below Friday, Thursday's high. So what you have here is an attempted to drive lower. It got absorbed. We never made it back to test value area high which is the purple line, and we certainly couldn't make it back to the point of control. All signs of strength. Now you've got to match that, right? Where were the best areas to find shorts? Well, it was all these orange levels through here. And if you carry it through to this evening, if you believe in technical analysis versus news, um, NQ is trading currently at 13.875, which is down right about here, right? And so... In a general sense, when I get above these orange levels, I'm looking for potential exhaustion areas, right? I, I would have said that 14.220 would have been the last one where it really had to, to get above because the next levels that needed to be tested were all the way up here, and that would have taken another enormous rally to get the, to get the push to get up there. So it just wasn't very likely um, to get up there, certainly not on Friday, right? And then... As I said, once we get above these prior days highs, generally when you look anywhere from an hour later to 24 hours later, we're significantly lower than where we were, right, uh, when we were above those levels. So when you look, you can see that as we got above, they really couldn't make much headway for exhaustion over here. But as soon as we got over 14,100, uh, yes, we eventually extended all the way to 14,200, but you can see above the prior days high into the zone, 
And we rejected out of that anomaly one, two, three, four times. This is what, what I mean by looking for trades that are at or near location. And then you can add all this because we rejected all the way out of this anomaly right up into the very end of the day where they finally got a little short squeeze up above it. So what do we learn from that day? First of all, buyers were when you can't make it back to the prior day's value area high within the first hour, it's bullish, right? Number two, you're then looking for either targets above or if you're, you're looking to short, you're looking for what a logical location to short above would be. So the anomalies are always logical locations to look for counter rotation. And then in a general sense, you're looking for exhaustion above a prior day's high. All of that came to play. It just so happened that there was no sellers on Friday. The market got hung up. The market obviously got exhausted. In a general way, above 14.029, you could start looking for potential shorts. And then from a very specific anomaly right up here, I don't have a better way of describing it. It just didn't, other than giving this little roll to the downside, which by the way, little is 120 points, but relative to the scale on little, um, 120 points down, then it came back to test over and over again. And again, we really didn't have much difficulty with this in the room. You could see that the rotations just weren't there. And today you had to be very patient to get this roll to the downside. It did come, you had to be very patient. All right. So um, also this uh, continues when you're on a trend day up and you break that trend day up the one time into the upside over New York lunch, the market tends to continue in the afternoon back to the upside. So another thing to think about. So let's erase all the lines and go look at ES really quick. And again, I know this is boring, but very, very important, right? So this way, when you come in and look at the market, you're going to go, okay, you know, first thing I want to see is can we, in that first half hour, can we push back to a critical level? Failure to do so, right? Failure to get back in, particularly by 930 in the morning, right? If we haven't made it back to that value area high, you got to be looking and thinking, hey, we're going to continue up. What's a logical place to continue up? That was the important part from that. If we look at um, ES, much the same story, right? Let's rest the lines. And what you will see here is the market gapped up into the anomaly, found responsive sellers. There's another anomaly down here. It's actually a very big anomaly right below prior day's high. This whole thing from 4288 to 4264. Yes, I know that is a big area. The market sets what that zone looks like. I don't. So... I don't have much control over that particular aspect of the market, nor do I seek that control. It's just how it is, right? Um, I don't have much to say uh, beyond that. It was a big zone, but you can see we reject from here. We come back to test prior days high, the top of the other zone, response of buyers. Where do they push it back to? Push it back to the top of the zone. They get some rejection to the top zone rejection. We finally close above the zone, backside tests, right? Now this is the end of 930. And remember, what have we done? We have failed to hold below prior days high. That's the green line right there. Or make it back to value area high. This is right over mind out of mind over markets. Failure to close back in to prior days value area high within the first hour. Means buyers are overall control. And in a general way, you can expect a push out to the upside. Right? So we push out. Right? And so if you're going to look for a push out, First of all, the market likes to travel anomaly to anomaly, and we know we can start in a general way, start looking for exhaustion here, here, and certainly up here. And again, if you look where we're trading right now, we're trading at 42.87, we closed at 43.80. I don't hold overnight. I was not short coming into this evening. Uh, however, right, the, the logic of that setup made an enormous amount of sense, right, in terms of if I'm all I want when I'm up in these areas above prior days highs is I want the potential to get the opportunity for the roll to the downside. I'm, I'm just looking to see, hey, is it setting up so that I can get that roll? I don't know that I will get it, but I'm looking to see if I can get it. And that makes a huge difference in the way that I um, look at the market and in the way that I am able to uh, make money or not make money. Right. So uh, at any rate, Friday was not a difficult day for us. Um, I kind of looked at it and said trend day up. And uh, um, we just did a lot of research in the room because these kind of days really aren't our aren't particular. I don't trade 
till after 9 a.m. And uh, I'm not particularly great at trend day up and trend day down unless I can get a pullback in my time frame and I um, later in the morning and I can trap sellers. And uh, uh, some members did catch that upside move. I just wasn't one of them. And that's totally fine. That's, you know, no one, uh, the market doesn't owe me anything. And certainly uh, no one in the room owes me anything. And I'm happy for the guys that made money in that, right? So next, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause here for a moment and I'm going to come back with some uh, fresh zones. Uh, actually, why don't I just do this? You can either fast forward through this. I'll show you how I make the zones and uh, we'll just kind of continue on our way. And if it helps you, it helps you learn. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go to my ES profile chart and I want to look for key areas, right? So let's just go and um, draw this chart up. So the first thing I can do is get rid of all these old orange areas, right? Why? Because we've traded through them. They're no longer, they no longer exist per se. And these yellow areas as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, duplicate this prior day's low. The green is a prior day's high or prior day's low. I don't label the charts because um, I just don't spend time doing it. That's all there is to it. Everyone in the room knows what they mean, what the different colors mean. So this becomes a prior day's low. It's a key low, obviously, that we started that swing off of. I would definitely mark on my chart that 4108.75 and take out that low. There's got to be a lot of stops sitting there now, right? People looking for that swing to hold. I would expect a response somewhere between 4108 and 4094. Plus, you have the single prints right in here. Right. I'm going to move this value area, value area clearly shifted up. So that becomes value area five. Let me move that. This becomes, excuse me, that becomes value area low. Value area high goes right here. They're pretty much the high and value area high were equal. This is a P profile, short covering profile you can see all the volume and uh, all the time from both profiles were all spent on top um, i'm going to mark off this anomaly this is a very important anomaly right there i'm actually going to make that anomaly white uh, white is my highest valued zone it just means um, i am looking since we've blown through it this evening that when and if we backside that 4306 to 4316 i would expect initial rejection out of that area, I need to move prior days low down just a hair, right? And let's move this. So now I'm left with a challenge. So I kind of have developed profile for my own personal uses, right? So I need to move the prior days point of control. So again, the volume point of control is all the way up here. That tends to act as a magnet. So I'm going to mark the whole area. That's the TPO POC and the volume point of control. And guys, just in your notes, just note off that um, pretty much the volume point of control, the TPO, the volume point of control, the um, value area high, and prior days high, Friday's high, are all pretty much smack dab in the same location. Right, so you can push that up higher. It makes the chart hard to see. So just know these are the prior days high, value area high, the volume point of control are all pretty much jammed right there together. Okay. Next, I'm going to um, so I'm going to highlight this 4268 to 4264 because that is still the last anomaly. But now we have the prior days high, and obviously uh, market participants participants will be looking at that retail gap fill. I don't think it's as important, but it's the only thing that's up there. This zone remains a light blue. Why? It's not an end cap anomaly, so uh, it can get traded through relatively easily. Um, and then we move the now what would be a strong anomaly down to Friday's TPO and volume point of control. I would definitely expect a response out of that area, that 4183 to 4173 the first time in, right? And then you have the single prints. Again, I would expect a response off the top of the single prints. And the 4108 to 4094, so that's a prior, both of those are prior days lows and potential areas for a trap. For those of you <coughs> who want, again, there is a low quality anomaly. It is an anomaly, 
So it's covered, colored light blue. And that just means it's a reason for it to rotate there, but I need additional evidence at that level uh, to buy. So that's the ES levels uh, coming into this evening. So now we can go look and see if they magically worked or not by dragging this over. Let me save it. Erase the lines. And we will add the evening session now. So let's see where we gap down and see how well my charting did. Okay, so there you can see we came down below prior days low, came into the retail gap fill. And you can see we rejected just shy of the white zone the first time. Now we've come up into this white zone this evening, rejected out of it. And now we're retesting Friday's low. So it's important to remember if we come in tomorrow morning and we gap down, but we're still within range. I mean, we're trading by 8.30 in the morning, regardless of what happens overnight. If we're trading 8.30 above 42.81 and a quarter, remember, just statistically, most gap downs that happen within range are highly susceptible to response of buying and getting pushed right up. And the logical target, if buyers really get squeezed or there's too many shorts, is 43.64 to 43.78. That is not the same as me saying I'm bullish or I think it's going to go there again. I only trade based on what the algos tell me. I'm just telling you that's the target up if responsive buyers step in. Logical location still a retest of this 4268.75 to 42.64. Still think that's a valid area. These areas are weak. They tend to hold better overnight in the European and Asian sessions than they do during the US session. And I would be looking to be a responsive buyer at 4183 to 4173. If we can make it down there, that's another 100 points away. So um, those are the levels. And then again, if we can get above 43.16, I don't see what's stopping us to get into 43.64 uh, for that gap fill. Uh, and then you also obviously will have half gap as a potential there. But first, it's going to have to work its way through 43.16. OK, so uh, let's post these levels to our members really quick. And we'll just get up to that 44.20. And we'll do it down to the 4100. Those are a bunch of zones and should be more than make anyone super happy in terms of looking for locations. So we'll copy that, save that as uh, ES0228, save. And I'll post that to the Slack channel right now. Let's go get our NQ done. So where is our NQ chart? So there's our NQ chart, and then let's get our NQ profile and go do the same thing. Um, again, if you do this as a regular practice, meaning go through and do the dull work of setting the levels, your trading becomes much easier because you're going to see, oh, they responded here. Oh, they responded here. To do this practice over and over again and you start to see where the response of buying is so let's go get rid of some stuff to start with there we go we cleaned that little mess up now let's get move the prior days high hmm, my wife's calling me hold on one second Okay, so um, what I do is just duplicate this line. Again, prior days high and low in green. All right, we're going to move. Oops, I want to move that. Let's go change this. There we go. Value area low. Set by the TPO. Value area high. 
again it's pretty much prior days high so we'll just kind of stack it up up there we'll move the um, so that the prior days point of control the tpo and the volume point of control is the one place it's a great target back in it's a horrible very difficult place to trade because it tends to be very choppy you have to decide whether you're willing to take stops in order to trade there the problem is that that it doesn't work the problem is the consistency with which it works is pretty challenging for most traders this is a valid anomaly here again you'll see it doesn't stand out as much as it did on the yes so it's going to be a yellow zone more than a white zone um, now we have to come down here and put in a zone right here for the volume point of control that's going to our, be our downside target and where we would expect a response down here in this 13509 to 13483 location and we're going to turn this orange for our prior days low you know there's got to be stops sitting down there so you know you've got to be looking for a response of buy in that area single prints i'd expect a response off the top and again off the back of that um, and then um, let's tighten this up just a hair no. there we go There we go. That's kind of what that zone looks like. Again, I would expect a response from here only because it's the prior value area high. Um, and it's the first anomaly to get to if we break um, the 13829, um, right? And then all these levels below are valid. Again, normally I'd be looking for a response out of this zone, but it's inside the value area instead of outside of the value area. So by marking it blue, I'm just saying I need additional evidence to take the trade there. I certainly would think if we got down to this level, we'd come down and test the single prints. And I'd be looking for longs below, also for swings on everything below 13.051 for traps back in. So uh, we'll see if it can uh, get down there. I'm not mega bearish or mega bullish. Again, the whole point of the room is to trade the process, right? The locations help significantly in knowing where you can turn those process trades the swing trades so again let's save it let's go look at the um thank you chart and see what it's done so far in the asian session which has actually been because of the russian situation quite active and uh, you can see we gapped down came right into the anomaly again i didn't make that up that was there to begin with from friday anyways trap back into prior days low worked up to the anomaly from 13 9 you can see how important those anomalies are to find a good location. And now we'll see what the market does or does not want to do. It's welcome to do anything it wants to do. So um, at any rate, that's my two cents. Um, I traded a little bit tonight because the market was active and I had a few minutes to do it. So uh, I'm already up and ready for the day and I'm going to go to bed here pretty early so I can be uh, as fresh as the daisy in the morning. If you have any questions, feel free to email me again, trade and perform at gmail.com i'm happy to extend a three-day pass guys just keep your heads about you tomorrow right uh, most importantly right i'm hearing from people individual people here and there right where they're having just one off day they're getting overwhelmed by the by the size of the range by how, the speed of the market right please don't let that happen to you right part of the deal with having a process is that you're also aware when you're not on process and you need a process for checking that set an alarm every if you're having a really hard time every 15 minutes am i on process am i taking my trades in the way they're structured particularly after taking a stop if you take a stop stops are natural and normal you've got to have that in your head right they're part of the plan even if our win rate's 80 percent we're expecting 20 percent of the trades to be losers it should not be tilting you into tilt it should not be pushing you into tilt trading um, write down what you're doing, whether you're on process or off process, not how much money you've made or haven't made. Are you on process or not on process? Which, which one is it? Right. And then lastly, if you really need help, only take trades when those trades are at location day after day, we look at these charts and you see they come into those anomalies, they get responses. When can you line up the algorithm with the location, right? Or close to the location. Um, and just be nice to yourself. You don't, this is pretty hard stuff, right? We're getting news announcements coming out from left field. 
you know, the whole world's attached to a news ticker at this point with what's going on with Russia and the Ukraine. And um, you don't have to trade everything. You just don't. Uh, and if it's too hard for you, that's okay. But don't blow yourself up in this environment it would be my strongest suggestion. And if you need help, the zones are there to help you out um, in terms of getting location. You will generally find, if you'll keep track of these zones, that you get a good response the first time those locations are touched, right? So, uh, anyways, if you have any questions, guys, I'll be obviously in the room in the morning, or y'all can email me or hit me up on the Slack channel. And uh, I hope everyone trades well, and uh, have a good night.